How low should we go? That is the question. Being able to tune our ride height with our no prep RC drag cars is just pretty much the evolution of the short period of time that this amazing sport has been going on. In early 2020, when most of us were racing stock slashes or even DR10s, our options were extremely limited. Now you can make your car as high as you want or as low as you want. I'm Chad, this is the Dorky and 40 RC channel. We're gonna make you faster today. So I'm waiting on some parts for the breakout chassis for the ultimate weight reduction here. And it's definitely gonna affect my ride height a little bit. And I thought we would talk about that in geometry a little bit since we touched on it in the last video, which I'll put up in here in the corner if you wanna take a look at that about my plans for weight reduction. Now I've got some of the parts here that I've already had forever and I have a three millimeter Weight Watchers plate that they call and what Todd has recommended to do is kind of double stack this right here so we get a little bit more stiffness and rigidity. I've got a thinner shock tower for the front, got a thinner shock tower for the back coming and a different battery so we are going to be able to make some massive weight reductions are we ever going to get close to that minimum weight like our boy power mad boy i do not know now i remember last year when i first started seeing pictures of people with their corvette bodies that were literally trimmed up past the front bumper where you put the big long sticker all the way up to there and i thought to myself chad how can you do this should you do this wow look at that that's gotta just help right well sometimes it did and sometimes it didn't see when you start making drastic changes to your car like putting in different shock limiters and everything else like that you might not realize all of the bad effects that you are adding to your car there's a reason why most of the better chassis now through the evolution of the sport comes with these things called setup sheets. So if we take a look at the base setup sheet here for my five-star breakout chassis, this is like your stock setting out of the box. They recommend a ride height of 18 millimeters in the front and 20 millimeters in the back. So how do you get to that number? Well, there's all kinds of little things, of course, how you have to build it, where you have to set your spacing, where you put your shocks at, like you can see here on the shock tower right here, what kind of hubs and pills that you use, which is things that set your offset in the back, what kind of cups you're using on your shocks, the stroke length, all that kind of stuff. And just to show you how important all of this stuff has became, Five Star has, I think, three or four different sizes now of shock towers for the front and the rear. And then they also have all of these things that you're gonna see called transmission riser kits. And some of these will rise your transmission at a constant level. Some might raise it at a level that is constant in one area, and then it might kick up or down in another area for some squat or anti-squat. They have a lot of options here, and most people are gonna go with just a basic option if you plan on lowering your chassis a little bit. I'm sure at some point that we're going to get into this, but right now with just the adjustments that I'm going to make the weight, that is going to be enough. We're going to have like a new car before I start doing anything else to the car. We're just going to run it like this, even though it would behoove me big word to go ahead and install things like transmission spacers and stuff like that while I actually have the car apart. So the simplest way to measure this kind of stuff is just using like one of these basic low C ride height gauges. And it's pretty simple to use. It's just got like a graduated millimeter scale on there. And this just kind of unscrews and goes up and down and will measure your chassis ride height. So if we look at the back of my chassis here, it says that we are supposed to be at 20 millimeters. So if I set this at 20 millimeters, and we try to stick it underneath here we can see where we are at and i am definitely lower than 20 millimeters already so i'm about 16 millimeters in the front and in the back here which is pretty good i've got just a nice low enough for me type of ride and a lot of it has to do with probably the way the car is set up 
when it comes to the suspension and how much it actually weighs. Now, I believe that when I decrease the weight, it probably is going to come up just a tad because there's a ton of weight on there. You know, if I'm able to cut four or 500 grams off of this, then of course things are gonna like not settle as much. Let's have to see how that turns out. Now, there's some do's and don'ts when it comes to this. Now, most people are gonna immediately think that, okay, if I wanna change my ride height, I'm just gonna start turning in my shocks or I'm gonna raise my shocks or put in some spacers, limiters, things like that. But the biggest thing you have to watch out for when you start doing things like that is the transmission. Now, we'll take a closer look at this in this video. We talked about it in our last one, but if we look back here in the back corner, and you see our dog bones right here, and they've got just a slight little angle on it. And when you lift this thing up, when it's driving down the road, they're pretty even. And now what's gonna happen is, let's say that we lower these shock towers and we wanna get this down about five millimeters. Well, when we push it down and this car is riding super low, you can see that this angle of attack here increases a lot. And what that's gonna do is just create so much more resistance and stress on your powertrain and your transmission that it's really not gonna benefit you at all. So the way that you solve that is you actually have to install these transmission spacers to bring everything up. When you bring everything up, then of course you're gonna get a good ride height and everything else. You still want a little bit of tension on there. You don't wanna be like super flat, so that way when you're going down the road, you're going at the opposite angle. That's just not the best way to handle it. Things could happen. Now, if we take a look at the front of my car here, and if we try to push down on it, you're gonna see that I can't really go down a whole lot. I'm already settled in there pretty good. And the whole reason behind that is that I have the whole front end limited to about a quarter inch, which is the MPRC rules, because you do not want a lot of movement up here at all. I think this is one of the biggest things to my success and one of the biggest things that might be holding people back is that when you have so much movement in here laterally, side to side, you are unable to just get yourself out of bad situations. If the car breaks loose somewhere down the track, I'm able to steer out of this thing between using this limiting functionality and the functionality in my M17 to make sure that I don't overcorrect or undercorrect for a mistake. But generally, as long as I'm applying good smooth power to the car, it's not gonna do anything like that. If it breaks out, it's gonna break from behind and it's just gonna fish tail out. Now the rear end is a little bit more tricky and we'll talk about this whenever we start rebuilding the shocks and everything. I got a pretty decent amount of travel back here. I'm not really limited at all. If I pick everything up, you know, what I'm being limited by is I'm hitting the wheelie bar and I'm using a shocked wheelie bar and it just kind of like gently rides just above the road and will kind of absorb the shock and the car and just keep it on a straight path. No, not really using it for any type of correction left or right. It's just doing what it's supposed to do, which is keeping the car as flat as possible and creating a little bit of resistance as it's going down the road. So you don't want your wheelie bar too high where it's not gonna do anything for you and you're still gonna pull the tires down the road and you don't want it too low where it's gonna actually dictate which way your car goes. So getting the geometry on your wheelie bar, shock tower, everything like that in the back really is, it really is critical. It took a while to get this all right. They came out eventually with these upgraded rear arms called the Swiss cheese arms and then this high rise mount adapter. Pretty much standard stuff on most cars now. You see it on the Aero, you see it on the Apollo, and it really does make a huge difference. Really nice. The other thing to kind of trick out the end of the wheelie bar is going to be those spongy mode of tires at the end. That's going to give, I think, just a little bit more forgiveness as well. So when I clean all this up and try to eliminate some of that weight, I think we'll see a little bit of benefit out of those. Now, a lot of people have seen my cars, and it looks a lot worse on the camera here. I'd have to straighten up the tires a little bit. 
and they're like, wow, looks like you have a lot of toe. And I don't really have a lot of toe here. I've got one degree out on the front and I've got one degree in here on the back. Now, if I wanted to, I could swap the hubs and that would make everything neutral. But running like this has just kind of, it's worked well for me. Uh, one of these days I might try out something different and see how it goes. But for now, I'm pretty happy with the way that everything has been running. I mean, why wouldn't I be? It's a two second car, but you know, we need to get this thing faster, which is the whole point of all this stuff. So when we're talking about ride height as well, one of the other things that's dramatically gonna affect it is gonna be the size of your front tires. Now, right now I've been running the DE Wranglers and the regular front skinny combination, as you can see here, but they did bring out a new low profile design of those tires, which is a little bit smaller. So we're gonna be doing a video here coming up that will compare some of the different tire sizes, these DEs to some of the five star ones, the 3D printed ones that I have and everything else. Last year, I experimented a little bit with the different small size tires, shaving down like the fuzzes and everything like that from J Concepts and the Pro Lines. I can't remember, maybe the Pyramids or whatever they were called. And I didn't have as much luck with it as I thought I would, uh, maybe because I just didn't put a lot of time into it. I don't think I, you know, I didn't even get the breakout car out until pretty much, I think, like, August, September, I ran the DR10 all the way until then. So I really only had like a couple months with this car before we pretty much shut down for the season, even though we put a ton of time into it. So those smaller front tires are gonna de decrease the ride height of the front just a little bit. And they are gonna be limited and stuff. So I might have to redo things up front here a little bit just to make sure that I am still getting a little bit of travel and stuff in the front. I don't want everything to be completely dead and locked up but I don't really foresee that to be a problem. But just the smaller size of those tires is gonna get me a little bit closer to in line to what Five Star says, even though I'm a lot lower than what the recommended setup is. I'm pretty even right here at about 1616, maybe 1716. So that should gain us an extra millimeter, maybe two millimeters in the front. So then we'll have a nice little gradual rake on the car, which is fine. That's what these cars like to do. So that way, whenever we do a hit and the things are sinking a little bit throughout the first you know 20 to 30 feet then the car itself is going to be even and then it'll come back up create a nice arrow as it's going down the road so hopefully when we're going down the road we'll be maybe you know 14 15 millimeters in the front and we'll be about maybe 16 to 17 in the back when the tires are obviously going to grow and increase the ride height now, one of the biggest things when you start playing around with the right height and stuff is going to be your body. And there's some dead giveaways here that I have some issues. You can, you know, look here in the back of my body and you don't see any tire rub at all. But you look here in the front of my body and you're going to see front tire rub. And that basically could be because I've got the body front slammed down a little too much or the tires are growing a little too much combination of both. Whatever it is, that is creating some resistance and we need to solve that problem. And of course, if we raise the body up a little bit, we're gonna get more air underneath there, which could be in causes some problems. But I think going with just these smaller tires is gonna eliminate this and I can still ride the body as low as I wanted to. The new GTR body that's coming is gonna have a way sleeker front end and some, of course, way better aerodynamic lines. So there could be some encouragement to drop this thing down a little bit. You know, the thing is though, is that you gotta think about what road and surface that you're gonna be on. I've seen some pictures online where people literally have like three to four millimeters of ride height. And you know, that's just not enough margin of error to go from one road or one race to another because people's roads are different everywhere. You know, if you have a perfect concrete surface that you're running on in your driveway or in front of your house or whatever, and then you go out into the streets, you know, you're gonna hit some rocks and you're gonna hit some problems. You're gonna have some problems basically. So you don't wanna go too low. I do have front shocks that are the same size on the rear. So that is one thing that I wanted to do right out of the bat. I did that when I built the car, I wanted to have everything all the same. And when you look at a lot of the better kits that are out there now that are made specific, you know, like the Arrow and the Apollo car, you know, they're all made the same. They're not made different. You know, we're taking the buggy kit here and we're modifying it and everything else like that. 
So I think that's been a big help as far as getting my ride height going on and just overall making adjustments and stuff. The springs, of course, I'm still using really soft springs, so we'll see how things go when it comes to the new uh, weight reduction, if we have to make some changes on that as well. The little things, of course, is that you wanna make sure that your body is mounted properly and it's not tweaked or messed up in any way. And also your wing. Um, I'm guilty of this as well, that I've mounted a wing on the way that I thought it was supposed to be, and it actually wasn't. I had the manufacturer of the wing reach out to me and say, hey, you need to flip those sides around a little bit. So all that kind of geometry on that stuff, of course, is gonna mess up the car, the arrow, and everything else. You know, carefully measuring out things like your arms and your ball stud lengths and everything and making sure that they are all concentric is the super important thing to do when it comes to getting your car set up. Calipers are your friend. I haven't found a benefit out of a setup station. The only one that the simplest idea that really helped me the best was using uh, Tim from uh, Barth Racing Concepts uh, tow gauge for the front. That really helped get the geometry right. This back here is pretty much a given because it is what it is when you buy it. As long as you build everything correctly and you set up your spacing and your turnbuckles the right length, then you're going to be just fine. So it's a very important thing to consider, especially if you have like a stock slash or a DR10 and you want to lower that thing down. And I've seen this out with some racers that we have locally, you know, their transmissions are like completely messed up and they're snapping dog bones and just tearing things up and they don't understand why. Well, this is the reason why. So don't get too aggressive with things. Definitely kind of understand what you're doing. It takes a little bit of time to learn this, watch things here on the channel, ask questions online. And you know, I'm learning every day, just like you are. And again, as I always say, we're gonna go faster today together. So we'll talk to you guys later, peace.